over the last decade, Brentwood has been among the elites in Suffolk County League One. And that remains the case in 2019. But they've got some company of late. The Longwood Lions, an upstart team a year ago, and an upstart team again this year. It's a Suffolk County League One showdown in our hospital for special surgery game of the week. The Longwood Lions hit the road to take on the Brentwood Indians. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Brentwood High School. Matt Shortis and Dan Savarino with you for a great game between two unbeaten teams here in Suffolk County, two co-champs in League One a year ago, and they're back at it for the first time head-to-head -head this year in Brentwood and Longwood. Yeah, and it's a game that, of course, has been kind of on a schedule circle for, I think, both of these groups coming in because you know how important it is to get League One wins, but the tri-champions last year, Ward, Melville, Longwood, Brentwood. Brentwood always towards the top because of their history, but Longwood gets Getting a victory at that regular season finale. That's what gave them the Tri Champions and some confidence for this group as you go into a new season in 2018-19. And one of the reasons for the big season last year and continuing that success this year is Isaiah Witte in the backcourt, all league performer a year ago. He stepped right into that role again this year. Yeah, the Witte brothers, Elijah is his twin brother who came off the bench last year and is in the starting role now. But Isaiah, a senior six foot three, team's leading scorer. He can look around, he'll hit you with some dimes. He has the ability to shoot the jump shot, good on the perimeter, good defensively, and he has really been their captain and go-to guy all season long. And we talked about Longwood being the young team. Brentwood was a young team last year. Bryce Harris was a sophomore then. He's a junior now. Another year older, another year development. And he's had a phenomenal sophomore season. He's had a great junior season so far. And already a couple of looks and offers right now. Lafayette and Stony Brook here on Long Island. Those are two pretty good Division I programs. And the offers are going to keep piling in. He's got the size right now for high school, but he also has the jump shooting ability when he goes to that next level, which makes him so lethal because he can knock down the triple. He can also go straight to the rack. He is their leader on and off the court, and he has been a great addition to this Indian squad. So a matchup of unbeaten teams coming up in just a moment. It's Longwood. It's Brentwood. It's brought to you by HSS, the number one hospital for orthopedics with locations in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. The best is now nearby. Moments away from tip-off here at Brentwood High School. Matt Shortis and Dan Savarino with you. As you can see, Longwood 8-0, Brentwood at 7-0. We'll shoot down to the sidelines where Amanda Puglisi is walking around at the moment. Thanks, guys. Well, Patrick Hayes, the coach of Longwood, really puts a strong emphasis on defense. In the eight games that his team has played on defense, they've only given up 40s, or they're averaging giving up 47 points. He's coached this team when they were freshmen on the JV level, and a lot of these guys he's had for three years on varsity. So he knows that his team is fully versed on the importance of defense and how key that's going to be today. Now on the other side, Coach Jimenez expects a tough game. He knows the defense that Longwood's capable of but he says hey we're home and when Brentwood's home we're a really tough team to play the key for them is going to be not to succumb to the pressure of the defense of Longwood and they're going to have to take care of the ball all right thanks Amanda yesterday coach Jimenez was saying really how similar these two teams were in terms of style in terms of pacing now let's take a look at the starting five first for Longwood we talked about Isaiah Whitty in the open Elijah Whitty rare last year a second leading scorer coming off the bench this year he's in the starting lineup along with Rancy Knox and Manderson over to Brentwood now again we talked about uh, Bryce Harris in the open, Allen Houston with some good size down there, and Xavier Martin, a guy who's kind of come in and surprised and filled in with an injury for Brentwood. Yeah, when you have uh, your starting point guard who was basically an all-league player, a starting point guard for a number of years, all-conference player, go down so early on in the season, you have to start looking around. And what Xavier Martin has done for this group is really surprised everyone because last year he didn't get a chance to see that time, but never said boo, just worked his tail off day in and day out and really was able to get this team, you know, consistent, at least in that point guard role until Lazo eventually is coming back, which again, he is cleared. Today would be his first day. He is eligible to play. Yeah, Kenny Lazo broke his elbow in the second scrimmage preseason of this year. So he has not played in a game yet. But that could change today. So Brentwood is in the home white uniforms. Longwood is in the road green. We are at center with Houston 
and Jarnell Rancy. And we're just about ready to tip it up. And we're underway, long one moving right to left. Witty to his brother, cutting to the lane, no good. Put back, falls for Jarnell Rancy. And Longwood's on the board. Yeah, Rancy, six foot seven. He'll play the point, but he knows how to attack the rack. Rancy, his head coach, says is one of their most gifted players. It's the size he brings. And when he's on, he's a tough matchup. Here's Jordan Riley, head of the key for Bryce Harris. Harris has the size advantage. Harris has a shot blocked by Rancy. So the size of Rancy already playing impact here. Here's Riley coming away with a steal, missed the opportunity. And Isaiah Witte's got it going the other way. Now you could just see what the perimeter defense, excuse me, what the shot blocking ability is of someone like Rancy who is averaging about six blocks per game. And that is not an exaggeration by any means. That six, seven span plus his wingspan on top of it, the long arms in a lane, it's hard to attack. Yeah, especially at the high school level. Here's Isaiah Witte averaging just under 17 points a contest. Manderson now picks it up at the free throw line. Longwood motion offense, Witte with time winding down on the shot clock. And we'll have a whistle and an offensive foul on Isaiah Witte who pushed off. So Amanda talked about defensively, both teams already showing some defensive awareness. Brentwood had a steal, draw an offensive foul here. And it's two groups that give up just about 53 or less. Longwood has not surrendered more than 59 points all season, of course, all victories. And on the other end for Brentwood, the most they have surrendered in a game was 52 against Chaminade, which is a very, very good basketball team that we know of. Fell in the Catholic League Championship game last year with St. Anthony's coming back on them. Here's Romello Wright. Pick and roll to the left side for Harris. Harris swings it down on the baseline and a travel against Brentwood. Allen Houston took one too many steps. So minute 40 into this one, Brentwood still looking for their first basket of the game. Slow start for both teams. So Rancy at 6'7", a bit of a point forward. He brings the ball up the floor. Elijah Witte driving to the baseline is fouled. The shot will not go. Romello Wright called for the personal foul. Elijah Witte, we talked about the spark he was last year as the unsung hero in all of League One. And of course, there's a lot of good basketball players in League One here, but you saw just on that last play, saw that he got the extra step against Romello Wright. Cut straight to the rack, getting himself a chance at the line despite missing his first. So both Witte brothers have some collegiate D3 interest as Witte knocks down the second. They may stay together post high school. Longwood showing some pressure now. Broken easily by Brentwood, driving right to the basket. Oh good, but a foul on Rancy. Rancy getting over. The ah. fans behind us are complaining all ball. I don't know, that was pretty close. That's a tough look. But a good take there by Allen Houston, who again himself, another big guy, 6'6 six, six player. Good take right to the rack. But Rancy so far has been everywhere. Houston missing on the first. Guy has been up on the varsity since his freshman year. But some of those teams were relatively deep, really getting his first opportunity to see significant minutes this year. Missed both and we'll have a foul off ball. Looks like it's gonna be a loose ball foul. No, a lane violation, pardon me. So Houston will get another crack at that second free throw. That was Manderson who jumped out a little too early. Of course, you lose a player like you did who ends up transferring out in Zed Key, a guy that a lot of people look to as one of the better players in the island now, Aluhai. You get an opportunity if you're Allen Houston to come on and really see some good minutes. Like you said, Matt, deep, deep teams. Brentwood always seems to have. So Houston gets Brentwood on the board. It's a 3-1 lead for Longwood. About two minutes into the first quarter. Elijah Witte driving right side of the lane. Hop step, puts it up and in. 
Elijah Whitty now with three of the five points. Longwood flashing pressure again to the right side. It comes for Harris. Harris drawing a double team. Strong move to the basket. What's so impressive about Harris is he is just a bull. Naturally big, naturally strong. Doesn't mind going to those gritty areas. And something that Coach Jimenez even said to us, he, he thinks a, a lot of coaches and colleges like that he isn't afraid to go to those areas. So many players now when they're that size and they're shooters will go into college and think they could just be wing players. But someone like him, he's okay with going straight to the basket. And you need more players like that. We had a whistle after Longwood inbounded the ball. Yeah, there was two fans coming on the court. Yeah, it's pretty tight here on the near sideline where we are between the bleachers and the court. It's about six inches between like thick green paint on the floor. Bank shot is good by Manderson. So two fans were trying to walk by and they threw the whistle. Right to the basket, no good. Rebounded by Witte. Isaiah Witte up the floor to Manderson again. Manderson will stop. Back to Witte, cutting to the basket and in. A real nice look from Manderson there as he had Witte cutting across. Hesitated, saw his open lane. Pull up for Harris from three is short. One and done. Longwood pressuring again. Manderson. Isaiah Witte, pull up, three, off the front iron, rebounded by Harris of Brentwood. Pace picking up here, Harris to Houston in the near side corner for Wright. Wright, wide open, pulls up for three, that's no good. And the rebound to Isaiah Witte. 9-3, Longwood advantage here in the early going. Manderson, right side, three is good. All Longwood in the early going, a nine-point lead for the Lions. And a timeout by Brentwood. Well, he came in with the scouting report of having the ability to shoot the three ball. He's hit multiple threes in four of their eight games this season. That's his first one today. Last couple of plays, some really good looks, and solely because of what Manderson did. Brought it up the floor, looked around, got himself to the corner, and saw, waited, hit the open man, get the assist there, and then hit the wide open jump shot in that far corner, just expanding the floor for a senior who's averaging eight and a half a game. It's a 7-0 run for Longwood right now to open up a nine point advantage. We'll take a look at the remaining schedule for the Lions. Of course, circle that one on the 19th at Ward Melville. Also defending tri-champs. Yeah, look at that, that schedule, the 22nd Central Islip, Team Brentwood, of course, again. Comac, another team that's very good here in League One. Skip pass across for Lasso. Lasso to the basket, no good. So Kenny Lasso, again, first day cleared was yesterday. He's back in action today, draws contact right away. Let's go down to Amanda, who's just listening in to Coach Jimenez in the Brentwood huddle. Well, Matt, before this game, the coaching staff at Brentwood told us the important one of the important facts for them are going to be crashing the boards. That's not what they were doing. Coaching staff saying we can't just be one and done. We really need to do a much better job of getting to the rim. Well, they put in one of their senior leaders, and he does just that. Lazo goes right to the basket and draws the foul. He's on the floor, what, 10 seconds, and he <laughs> does what he does best? Coming back after... And of course, hurting your elbow, your elbow itself, that is a tough thing to come back from, breaking your elbow itself. The rehab. They missed on the second free throw. And you'd imagine Anthony Jimenez had to be holding his breath a little bit as Lasso kind of got sent to the floor after getting fouled on that last take. Longwood breaking through the pressure. Shot blocked from behind by Riley. Here's Brentwood the other way. Lazo, a little uncontrolled. Able to get it back, though, to right for three. It's good. First long-range shot for Brentwood today, and they're back within five. It's 12-7. Well, he's known for his defensive ability, but he also himself has a chance to stretch the floor. Penseal has his shot blocked by Houston. All of a sudden, Brentwood playing with a little swagger. So many times a good defensive play can just spark you, and we've seen two of them. Harris looking inside, has it taken away. Andrew Knox coming away with it. Knox. A little carried away, but we'll have a 
Whistle against Brentwood. Press Harris picking up the personal foul. So we played a little over halfway in this first quarter. It was a slow start, first few minutes, but both teams sort of found their stride now. Isaiah Witte. Witte got himself out of his shoes and lost the ball. So three straight empty-handed possessions, a couple of blocks, unforced turnover. And just like that, momentum starting to swing to the home team side. Penny Lazo controlling. Here's Jordan Riley. Harris, floating shot, no good. Too strong off the back iron. Knox has it taken away by Riley. Riley up with it, goes in. Jordan Riley's first points of the game as he averages a shade under 20. Taken away by Lazo. Lazo, ahead of the pack, goes up with it. Knocked out of bounds by Manderson. Boos are coming from the home team that wanted a foul. None forthcoming. Hey, almost took out Tom Schnars, our camera guy. He all right? I think he's fine. He's a tough guy. You know him. Wright holds up top. Bounces it down low for Houston. Houston turning over his right shoulder and puts it up and in. It's an 8-0 run for Brentwood to get it back to within one. Manderson some trouble over the timeline. Bothered. Ball to the dirt. Fight for it. A jump ball is called and it's Brentwood ball. Everyone on their feet here on the near side of the bench as Lazo showing off the muscle. What a hustle play by both of these groups hitting the deck. First right goes after it. And Lazo jumping in there to force the jump ball and eventually the possession. This entire run coming with Lazo coming into the game. Harris for three, too strong. Rebounded by Isaiah Witte. Witte with some pace now to the basket. Not the finger roll. And the long one lead back to three. Inside two to play in the first. Lazo on the crossover. Lazo left side of the lane, up and under and good. First field goal of the season for Kenny Lazo. Here's Witte. Lost the handle for a moment, but recovered. Isaiah Witte's got Bryce Harris defending him. Our two spotlight players before the game. Ball to the floor again. Out of bounds, Brentwood ball. Boy, the defensive intensity has been turned up for Brentwood in the last two minutes. Of course, you know the Brentwood style. We talked about the Longwood style of defense first, no matter what. But it's no different with Brentwood. Hustle plays, get to those loose balls, and then use it in transition. And that's what we have seen. Even though they haven't scored a bunch of transition points, it has been the hustle plays that have been earning them possessions. Lazo left side from Ari Isaacs. Here for Riley. Riley shot won't go. Kept it alive with a tip. Pulled down by Harris. Harris going across his body, puts it in. Oh, boy, that's an impressive play by Bryce Harris. Explosive move into the lane. Brentwood leads for the first time today with 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Right side, this is Glenn. Now it's Elijah Witte. Elijah Witte with one point today from the free throw stripe. Glenn driving to the basket is fouled. Messiah Collins, first personal today. Third foul against Brentwood this afternoon. Watch for number 10 Mobley here. He's a good shooter. 
Well, instead, Isaiah Whitty will take it. He's short. Offensive board put back up by Penseal. Shot clock turned off with eight seconds to go in the quarter. Here's Lasso. Lasso crossover gets Manderson crossed, but pass tipped away into Mobley's hands. Long shot, no good. Penseal had a couple more seconds on the clock, but got the shot off. So after a quarter of play, Longwood leading by one on the road. It's 16 to 15 in our HSS Game of the Week, brought to you by the Hospital for Special Surgery, the number one hospital for orthopedics with locations in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. The best is now nearby. Welcome back to Brentwood High School. Matt Short is along with Dan Savarino. Patrick Hayes, the third year head coach for, uh, for Longwood, guiding them to a playoff appearance last year. But the sideline for Longwood, it's a generational affair, right, Amanda? That's right, Matt, it is. And when you look at the coaching staff, Brendan, who is Coach Patrick's brother, but the father, Pierce Hayes, actually, he is a, a mainstay at Longwood. He was the girls' basketball coach in the 90s, and now he's the assistant. And Coach Hayes, Coach Patrick Hayes, says that his siblings, he's one of six, his siblings say that he's the one that really keeps his dad in check here on the basketball court. Well, somebody's got to, right? <laughs> It's probably hard when you've been the head coach for so long to take the assistant job. Especially when it's your son, right? Like not to overreach there. Yeah, sometimes you like it though. You have a chance to just relax a little bit. Here's the defense by Brentwood again. Lasso, alley -oop, knocked away by Witte, out of bounds. Boy, Witte was so high on that that he could have like um, Bill Russell it, like just grabbed it two hands and gotten it to himself. Yeah, I think he got a little nervous also with the pressure there from Riley. But you can tell, springboarded up. He's got those ups coming up there. There's Jordan Riley in the corner. Long two is good. Riley with four today. He and Harris leading the way for Brentwood. Now this game has kind of settled into the pace that we anticipated. Nice pass down low. Witte's first shot won't go. Second one is blocked from behind. Lazo catching it in stride. Lazo streaking to the basket. Lays it up and in. He has been a difference maker since he stepped back out onto the court. Just an absolute spark plug. You think they've missed Kenny Lazo over the last seven games? Well, they've managed to stay unbeaten without him in the lineup. They get that much better with an all county returner. Back in. Timeout taken by Longwood. And you wonder, Dan, with Kenny Lazo, how much can he play today? I mean, Coach Jimenez said he felt like there was plenty of work that he was doing in terms of keeping up in cardio shape, but he hasn't played basketball in, you know, six plus weeks. Yeah, at least an actual game. He hasn't played a game itself. Practice, you can only emulate what it is. But during that time, didn't get a chance to, of course, practice with the team when he was out for a portion of that time. So, yeah, there is obviously concern there going forward. You have to see how much, you, you know, you can still give him, how much time you can still give him on the floor without it maybe uh, hurting a little bit too much and hurting the court itself. But he, he's a tough kid. You can see what he brings to this group, a leader on and off the floor for them. And he's just a phenomenal athlete as well. He also was a team MVP or team most outstanding player on the football team for the last couple of years. Really good wide receiver in DB. And he showed the speed, that's for sure. Jordan Manderson has had some good moments today. Manderson floater to the lane, no good. Offensive board by Witte, who's fouled. And I believe that was on Harris, which is gonna be his second personal. So Harris playing with two on the other side for Longwood. Jarnell Rancy playing with two, which is why we haven't seen him in some time. So two key guys for either team. Will probably be out for an extended period here in the second quarter. As Harris goes to the bench now. But he's got his second. 
Brentwood lead is two. It's 19 to 17, a minute and change into the second quarter. As Kenny Lasso off a screen, little pick and roll with Riley. Riley will give it back. Lasso, no look pass to the right side. Curling inside to the middle of the painted area was Collins. Longwood pusher, pressuring. Knox, this is Manderson now, third year varsity player. Manderson had the ball tapped out of his hands. Fight for it on the baseline. Picked up by Longwood. Knox. Right side, Panseal, nice pass underneath and a block shot by Riley. Fight for it and Brentwood's got it. Here's Riley going down the other way. Riley's shot won't go. Longwood's got it now. Panseal, and a foul on Brentwood. You know, Matt, it seems sometimes when you see Brentwood break down on defense where it allows an opportunity, it seems to be an easy basket or a potential easy basket. It's those long arms that get in those passing lanes and block shots. They have so many guys who could be rim protectors on this team and you don't see that very often at the high school level to have multiple guys on the floor who can do that. Well, right now it's Allen Houston down low. Underneath Witte, nice scoop shot on the reverse. Elijah Witte with his first field goal today. Two point game, it's 21-19. Kenny Lazo over the timeline. Riley on the crossover to his left, pull up, drains it. And Coach Jimenez told us he's proven himself to maybe one of the best guys on this island. And he's only just a sophomore. Kick ball is the reason for the stoppage. Yeah, Jimenez said he feels like he's already proving himself to be one of the best players on Long Island. There's Elijah Witte knifing through traffic, no good. Rebound by Knox. Kick out for Isaiah Witte. That shot won't fall. Both Witte brothers having a bit of a tough time with it offensively in the early going here. Eight points combined between them. Riley and Lasso at the top of the key. Lasso picks it up. Houston, back it comes for Riley. Wide open straightaway three, well short. And he kind of bends over in frustration after the fact. Long pass, a little too long for Jarnell Rancy. Goes out of bounds. Boy, Longwood got so lucky on that Riley air ball because it was Manderson who got caught down low on a mismatch assignment. Supposed to stay up, ended up going dropping down, making a wide open jumper. Here's right on the left side. Houston will try a three, it's good. Allen Houston, the 6'6 swingman, gives Brentwood their largest lead of the game. Seven point advantage for the home team. Right side two is too long. Flipped underneath, count it, and one. As Isaiah Witte goes up and is harmed. So Collins picks up his second personal foul. The extra pass is what led to the foul. Another smart play there by number 11, Manderson. So Isaiah Witte, who's managed double figures in every game that he's played this year. Hits the free throw. Up to eight. And then he'll check out of the game. After that. Past the midway point of the second quarter. It's a Brentwood lead at 26 to 22. Longwood led for much of the first. Here's Riley, lost the ball. 
Wright got it back. Kenny Lazo now. Lazo went down to the ground and he was holding his right knee and is still kind of favoring it. I don't know if he slipped or what happened. But yeah, a couple times we've been seeing a few uh, slips out on the court. Happened a lot in the first quarter. Jim is packed. Standing room only at this point. Free throw line jumper for Longwood off the side of the iron. Offensive board and a foul. As Keandre Pensil will go to the line. Julian Almonte on the personal and Longwood now in the bonus, so they'll be shooting free throws from here on out. Seal's got some good size down low. Average is a shade over seven a game. Second free throw is good. Two point game at 26-24. Last five have been scored by Longwood. Romello right back into the game. Right drive, kick out. Long two for Almonte. Going up for the rebound was Jordan Riley. Well, that's gonna be a foul against Riley over the back. And again, with still almost three minutes remaining, Longwood is shooting free throws. And the fouls have continued to add up. We saw a bunch early on here in the second quarter. And a lot of it has been going hard to the basket, but fouls like that and the other end of the floor are ones that like, really frustrate you when you're a coach. Allowing one and ones at this point. So Andrew Knox has his first point of the game. Coach Hayes refers to him as super glue. One point game, 26-25, right side. Baseline jumper no good. Longwood's got it, pushing ahead. Here's Knox. Now Witte, long two-pointer, knocked down. 8-0 run for Isaiah Witte and Longwood. And Witte's up to 10 now today. And a big reason, like you said, Matt, has been some of those fouls getting themselves to the free throw line early on. Hero step across for Riley, shot won't go. And we'll have a foul on the rebound attempt. Looks like it's going against Longwood. And in transition, Whitty's got such a good mid-range shot. It's the style that they want, attack in transition as much as you can. Keep playing hard, play aggressive. So definitely been a game of runs so far. Longwood had the early advantage, then Brentwood had a big run. Favor of Longwood right now. Lazo to the basket, fouled. And he'll go to the line for two. So Lasso's got five today. And last year, 13 points a game, seven assists. Big factor for Brentwood getting to the county semifinals. One of the key returners of this group and one of the reasons why there was, I don't wanna say a lot of hype or expectation, but there's always a high expectation when you play for Brentwood every single season to be able to make a deep run. When you bring back some key pieces like a start, starting point guard like Lazo and Harris and Riley, and then you have these other sophomores and freshmen come in, it really helps. Turnaround shot, tough shot by Rancy. Rancy getting his own rebound, putting it up and in. Now he's been quiet because of foul trouble, but when he's on the floor, he is a difference maker. 
First points of the game for Jarnell Ramsey. We're under two to play in the first half, 29-28, Longwood leads. Going to the basket, Allen Houston getting the defender up in the air. Count the basket, he'll go to the line to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. A tremendous pump fake. Rancy bit on it the whole way. It helps you a little bit more. You're taking off Rancy, who again is the other team's point guard. And now you can defend down low. And you also put two points on the board with the potential for a third. Missing on the free throw. So Houston, who averages seven and a half a contest. He's already got eight in the first half. Right around 90 seconds to go in this first half. Manderson stripped, kept it alive. On the baseline, Witte fouled as he went up. Well, a great job by Manderson just to keep that possession alive. A few times, Brentwood has gotten caught in uh, situations where you know, you're allowing them down low be below the, the paint. You're allowing them to those areas in the blocks. Yeah. Off of some off ball screens, cutting down low. And you're feeding those passes in, which are leading to a lot of these fouls. It has led to a lot of trips at the free throw line. So Witty, three points today, one of three from the stripe. Hits the second. So we're all knotted up at 30. 75 seconds left in the first half. Kenny Lazo. And the left side corner for Wright. Double dribble on Wright. Turnover. Mobley into the game. Definitely on the smaller side, but brings some great energy. Elijah Witte, kick out right side for Glenn, but he traveled. We've seen a few travels on both sides here, a couple double dribbles. And a little bit sloppy in the turnover number. But at least for both of these groups, it has been even. Yeah, both teams struggling down the stretch here in this first half. Tough shot put in by Wright. Shot clock is off, there's 24 seconds left. As Manderson pull up, tough shot. Offensive board kept alive by Andrew Knox. Elijah Whitty driving on the baseline. Shot won't go, got his own rebound. Second attempt, no. Back up with it. And a jump ball, it's Brentwood ball. So with 20 seconds on the clock, you now have three different possessions. And I honestly thought that Manderson maybe rushed the shot a little bit early. Maybe they wanted him to take an early look. And actually possession the other way. And on the board, it's saying to the guest. At the scorer's table, the arrow is to Brentwood. Four seconds on the clock. Here's Riley. Riley got a pretty good look at it, but it won't go. Kisses the front of the iron and falls short. But at halftime, Brentwood has a two-point advantage. It's 32-30 in a matchup of unbeatens here at halftime. Brentwood over Longwood by two. Brentwood leading on their home floor at halftime, 32-30. It's time now for our HSS Tip of the Week.
Cross-training has many wellness benefits, including helping prevent common overuse injuries. Overuse injuries of the foot include tendinitis, stress fractures, and plantar fasciitis. These injuries develop over time from repetitive trauma or wear and tear. Cross-training gives your feet time to rest and repair, lessening the chances of injury. If you do develop a foot injury, see a doctor for proper diagnosis. The good news is that these types of injuries usually heal without the need for surgery. HSS, the number one hospital for orthopedics, with locations in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. The best is now nearby. Once again, that was our HSS tip of the week. Now we'll throw it down to Amanda Puglisi. She's got more. So Kateri Poole is a standout on the Monsignor Scanlon girls basketball team, but as News 12 the Bronx, Dan Serafin is gonna tell us, it seems like basketball is in her blood. This scene on basketball courts throughout New York City has played and replayed so many times. Marquis Poole with his daughter Kateri. Dad was a star at All Hollows High School, played college hoops at St. Bonaventure. Kateri grew up learning the game. She would watch me play and like, Dad, this look, can I do this? And you know, she started spinning the ball on her finger. She was six. I was like, yeah, I couldn't even spin it on my to this day. Kateri kept getting better. AAU with new heights. Now at Monsignor Scanlon High School, Marquis says their styles of play are similar. They haven't played against each other though since that one time more than five years ago. That last basket, it was real hard D. She, I just she threw just it up. threw it up and it went in and she would never play me again. So that's the last time. <laughs> that's the only time I'm playing. <laughs> you won't love it, she won't let me play again. No, I'm not, I won't already. But it's anybody else. That game never happened. I told you. <laughs> this is a Scanlon program that sent seven players to Division I college basketball in the last five years alone. Coach Catalanato says Kateri may be the best in his seven years coaching here. This has been a plus for this team, for the school. Among the most heavily recruited high school players in the nation, only a junior. My name kind of got bigger and um, I realized that when little girls started coming up to me like, hey, you're Kateri Poole, so, you know, I just got to stay humble. Duke, Tennessee, Louisville. Among the many college scholarship offers, Kateri already has. In Throg's Neck, Dan Serafin, News 12, The Bronx. We have a whole another half of basketball to play here at the Hospital of Special Services. Game of the week, Brentwood leads Longwood 32-30. Been a back and forth game with Brentwood leading Longwood 32 30 and halftime. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Yeah, when things started off here, I mean, Brentwood was going straight to the rack. They got some early buckets, but it was the defense of Longwood that really stepped up. The Witty brothers were getting themselves to the rim. They were blocking shots. They were hitting jumpers from the corner, like Manderson, who ended up having five in that first half. But then when Lazo came onto the floor, things just started to change for Brentwood. They started getting their three ball working a little bit right. They were attacking the rim with Allen Houston, who ended up finishing with eight points back in that first half. And it was different ways of finding open looks. And I think that was the difference maker, Matt, when you started seeing some you know, empty handed possessions by both of these teams. They just seem to keep going to the rim and they're not afraid to go to the rim. And that's what kind of slowed down, picked up the game a little bit more for Longwood, cut into the deficit, eventually take a lead, even though Brentwood would end up carrying this 32-30 lead into halftime. And as we talked about coming into the game, Isaiah Witte for Longwood, they expected big things out of him. He's been their featured scorer so far today. 10 points in the first half. Took him a little while to get going, but he's had some nice shots underneath. Yeah, in different ways. The transition game where he's going straight to the rim. Other ways where he's pulling up and hitting a jump shot. The handoffs have been working as well. It's finding open looks from his teammates. It has been a complete effort, and that's what you love to see about Longwood. They're sharing the basketball. And how about Allen Houston? He averages just over seven a game. He's got eight in the first half. Yeah, he's a guy who has double figures three times this season, already has eight here at the first half. He can shoot the three-pointer. We actually saw him unleash the three-pointer earlier on. But again, it's that size. He's comfortable carrying the basketball straight to the cup and finishing around the rim. So the second half is coming up. Just a two-point game and a battle of unbeaten. Stay with us here on News 12 Varsity. Welcome back. Third quarter just about to begin. Kenny Lazo hadn't played a game yet this season. He got in in that first quarter. Amanda's got more on the Brentwood guard. 
And Matt, of course, it was a little bit of a slow start for Brentwood, and as you mentioned, but once Kenny Lazo came back in, he really turned the game around for the Indians. And when I coach, spoke to Coach Jimenez, he said to me that he didn't think that his team would be in the situation they are right now if it wasn't for Lazo. He really brings that physicality and that athleticism and, of course, that competitive drive that the Indians really were lacking. And he says, look, we really need to play with a little more poise in the second half, and certainly that's something else that Lazo brings to this team. Yeah, it was a slow start for Brentwood until Kenny Lazo checked into the game, and that gave him a bit of a spark. Other guys started to step up. Of course, we saw from Allen Houston moments ago during the halftime, but Lazo seemed to spur them on defensively, and that allowed them to get back into this game after trailing early on 12-3. And you also wonder how much Longwood prepared for someone like Lazo to come into the game since he has been out for so long. I'm sure it's definitely a thought process, but you wonder if it would give the same look for sets. Longwood moving left to right as we begin the third quarter here. Eliza, Isaiah Witte moving in underneath for Andrew Knox, who's fouled. Such a patient play by Knox. Fading away, knowing he's going to have a body come right on to him. It would be a tough angle regardless, but see if he can get the body and get himself to shoot a couple of free throws. So Andrew Knox, Andrew Knox to the line. Makes the first. Along with they've done a decent job at the free throw line tonight. They've definitely gotten more opportunities than Brentwood so far in this game. Missing on the second, out of bounds. It'll stay with Longwood though. And here are those extra possessions that you have to see teams start to be able to take advantage of. Because I feel like any time you've had an empty-handed one, you haven't seen the team take full advantage. Knocks in some trouble on the sideline, stepped out of bounds. Right in front of the Longwood bench and turns it over. And he tried the old dodgeball play, but he was already on the line. And I got it to Penseal underneath, but he was well defended. Here's Jarnell Rancy. He visits it down court on the baseline. Up and in with it is Allen Houston. Houston now into double figures with 10. And back to back 10 point outings for Houston. And he has looked good this evening using that mismatch size. So if he's the guy they get going, look out for Brentwood. Latter part of the season. Foul on the floor. Elijah Witte went hard to the basket. Houston. Caught a shoulder to the face and went down a moment. And he gets called for the foul. They had two personals in uh, 247, 248 into this game, or into the third quarter. After he was one of the few guys that it seemed didn't have one on him. Isaiah Whitty receives the inbound pass, pump fake. He's getting deed up by Harris. Whitty getting by Harris, feeds it to his brother, cutting to the basket, no good. Elijah gets his own rebound. Up top for Manderson. Right side now for Penseal. Uncorks a three and drains it. We're all tied at 34. When you talk about the Longwood style of playing above the rim. Catch underneath for Houston. Found himself undefended. And that style of being above the rim earns them extra points. Witte gets the friendly roll. So back and forth we go now, all knotted up at 36, a minute 40 into the third quarter. Kenny Lazo over the Brentwood logo at midcourt. Picks up the dribble. Up top for Riley. Riley, tough physical play. Count the basket and the foul. Knox will pick up his second team's first after Riley attacking the basket. His dad was a college athlete, explosive. Get those balls, those 50-50 balls. We've seen it a few times today. Just Again, the size is so difficult to match up with. Riley's shot no good. Offensive board also no good. Bryce Harris kind of was caught for a moment because 
His shot went up behind the basket and the officials allowed play to continue. So now we have a foul down the other end of the floor. That's actually gonna be the third against Harris. And still plenty of time remaining in this game. So Pensial to the free throw line. Four points today, two or two from the stripe. It's the first. So Brentwell was in foul trouble much of the second quarter. They are kind of cruising their way towards that again, two minutes in to the third, and they've already got three fouls. And Harris has been pretty quiet in this game as well. Pensiel missed it, got it back off a tip and put it in. So Longwood back on top. And the whistle's piling up as Jordan Manderson picks up a foul. Lasso has been quiet so far in this third. Lasso up top for Houston. Houston a long two. He's feeling it tonight. 14 points for Allen Houston. Nice smooth stroke. Here's Witte. Tough move to the basket. No good. Rebounded by Allen Houston. Houston coughs it up as Witte puts it up and in. Back and forth we go, Longwood back on top by one. Pass goes through the hands of Houston and out of bounds. And take a look at Whitney redefending. There's Elijah Woody streaking, Whitty streaking up the floor. Isaiah, back to Elijah, left side now for Panis Pansial. Double team pressure, Brentwood bringing some pressure, Eliza Witte, the open man underneath. Real nice ball movement, working around on that left side, just waiting for someone to bite. It ends up working out as Witte cuts right underneath the net. There's Kenny Lasso with some fancy ball dribbling. Lasso poked from behind, out of bounds. Woody had gotten ready to take a charge, but play continued. Here's Wright with a soft touch, push shot, no. Pensial on the board to Isaiah Witte. Witte picks up the dribble. Hounded on the sideline and a foul on Jordan Riley. And then Riley said something to the official. Fortunately for him, the official kind of had a little calmness to him. Elijah Woody's shot won't go. Otherwise, he could have gotten a technical. In transition, down the other end, Riley lets off some steam. Longwood trying to answer back. Pansial underneath, in traffic, tough shot. First one won't go, he's fouled on the second one. Well, instead of getting teed up, it's better to let out your frustration in other ways. A little smile at the camera towards the end. I see him staring it down. Big righty jam. Just a sophomore. And a guy who started basically on this team last year as well. Numbers have only gone up and has dropped at least 17 in each. Pensial hits the first. Allen Houston just picked up his third personal foul. So he goes out and Bryce Harris comes back in. Both 
those players with three each. Yeah, it's gonna be tough for them because now both of your big men are playing with three personal fouls against a team that likes to attack that way. So the Longwood lead back to three. They led early on by nine. It was 12 to three. That was the largest lead for Longwood today. Brentwood led by as many as seven at 26 to 19. But since then, it's not been more than a few points for either team. Here's Harris, double teamed on the baseline. Cuts underneath for Riley. Riley's foul. And it's gonna be Ramsey, and that's a big foul. That's four. And now both teams showing some frustrations towards the officials. So Ramsey's gotta go out. Jordan Riley at the line. Riley hitting the first. That's frustrating, Matt, for Jarnell Rancy and Longwood. Kid who already is a verbal to NYIT, the senior, and their captains. So strong defensively. We haven't really even seen the real Jarnell Rancy this evening. And he's been hampered by foul trouble the entire night. Ten points now for Riley today. And Brentwood back within a point. There's Manderson calling out a play near the timeline. Left side for Knox. Knox trying to body his way in. Elijah Witte will pull it back out. Witte going to the basket, shot blocked and out of bounds. Last touch by Elijah Witte. Jordan Riley with the rejection. Boy, Riley getting right up in there. See, not in my house. It's a couple of blocks now for him. And him and Knox getting at it, and we're waiting for the a uh, little more with the technical or not. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a technical, but definitely some words being issued by the officials. Knox ahead to Riley. Riley up and under to the basket. Gets the crowd to their feet. Well, they saw the chirping going on. Isaiah Witte blocked by Riley, but a foul. I don't know about that one, yeah. man. First look, that looked really, really, really close. Sometimes that's an issue when you have those long arms. You get caught out of position. You try and go for the block no matter what. It looks a little bit worse than it actually is. And that's the third foul now for Jordan Riley. We'll put Isaiah Witte at the line. First one good. So we're all tied at 46. And now with 2.48 to go in the third, already the sixth team foul against Brentwood, so the next one will put Longwood in the bonus. <laughs> Riley almost left his feet. There's Lasso. Lasso going against Manderson. Scoop shot is good. He's got the handles and it brings everybody to their feet. Pencil has it blocked. By Collins, Brentwood looking to run. Here's Lazo again, Lazo underneath, shot won't go, put back is good for Bryce Harris. Three point lead for Brentwood at 50 to 47. Two and change left in the third. Now the crowd's starting to get into it. Manderson, pull up from three, no good. Long rebound to the sideline and a foul. Looks like it's going to go against Longwood. And it's the fourth foul against Andrew Knox. And Patrick Hayes thinking and feeling like things are becoming 
slightly unraveled, wants to stop that right now. He takes a timeout. Now you get the crowd on your side. This gym, again, is not the largest by any means, and that's what makes it even louder. And You love the support that always comes out here for Brentwood basketball. But it's a lot of the little plays that have been working out on the defensive side, turning into offensive points. Jordan Riley's had a huge third quarter. Amanda's got more on that. Well, a few years ago, before, before Coach Jimenez even knew who Jordan Riley was, he was at an AAU game with his younger son, and they were playing in a game. And his son's team was really struggling against this one player and this one team. Coach turns to a parent on the other side and says, man, I would really love to coach that kid. I wonder where he's going to go and play in high school. And the coach turned around to co the parent turned around to coach and said, well, you'll be very happy because even though he's only a sixth grader, he's in the Brentwood School District. And Coach Jimenez says, I couldn't wait to get him on the varsity level. And he's paid huge dividends. Still an underclassman, but taking this game over in the third. Count that and one. Boy, Jordan Riley came out of the timeout, double team, didn't matter. To think that he is only a sophomore, Matt, on a team that last year he saw time, he started as a freshman. He's got real good size on him. He's only going to get bigger and stronger and continue to improve his game. Sky is the limit for this kid. Jordan Riley with 15 points now. And a six point Brentwood advantage. 6 0 run over the last few moments. Elijah Whitty. Isaiah in the left side. Corner. The bounce won't go. Out of bounds now. Brentwood ball. Thought Harris might have touched that last, but it'll go to the home team. Here's Jordan Riley now. He's feeling it. Left elbow jumper short. Rebound to Elijah Witte. Up ahead for Knox. Knox to Isaiah Witte. Tough shot. No. And Brentwood comes away with it. Lazo ripping it down. Here's Bryce Harris. Harris using the body. Right-handed layup. No good. Manderson's got it for Longwood. A little helter-skelter here inside a minute to go. Manderson thought about a three. Pump fake. Knocked away, but a kick ball on Kenny Lazo. So the officials getting together. Let's see if they put some more time on the clock. Or they were just confirming that it was Longwood ball. <laughs> Left side jumper for Witty, no good. Skying to the basket, second jam of the quarter for Riley. Back the other way, Elijah Witte now. 55-49, Brentwood on top. 25 seconds left in the third, shot clock is off. There's Kenny Lazo. Lazo crossing over Menderson. Left side for Harris. Harris underneath, nice feed, no good. Put back, won't go, third time, no. Two seconds, one, Witte heaves it down. Actually, it's a pretty good shot off for a baseball pass. But a 9-2 run to end the corner for Brentwood as they lead 55-49, heading to the fourth. It's our News 12 Varsity Game of the Week brought to you by HSS, the number one hospital for orthopedics with locations in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. The best is now nearby. 
Welcome back to Brentwood High School. Matt Schroeder, Stan Savarino, and, and Dan in that third quarter, Jordan Riley got going. Yeah, he was doing it in so many different ways. First, the emotional aspect of it on one end of the floor. You know, he gets into the face. He, he says one too many words, almost gets teed up, doesn't. Very lucky about that. And then he just uses that energy and emotion to his advantage, slamming it down a few times here in the third quarter, forcing turnovers, getting blocks, getting in the face, playing hard. He's the kind of basketball player you need when you want to try and turn over a game. Oh, yes. A little miscommunication, but it ends up working out in Brentwood's favor. Amari Isaacs was inbounding it to Kenny Lasso. And he zigged when Isaacs thought he was going to zag, but Isaacs able to recover it and then drew the foul. Well, yeah, they have something off on the score because on the scoreboard it says that the, the last player to foul was Andrew Knox, and it's saying two fouls. But Andrew Knox has four fouls, so if that was a foul on Knox, that is number five. So I think they need to clarify who the foul was on because otherwise if it was on Amari Isaacs, then he wouldn't be inbounding the ball. I thought originally they... Hit the foul to Manderson because he was the one that was complaining the most. That is what I thought as well. But I think that's where Patrick Hayes is unsure right now because he's seeing, well, the four that has two fouls would be Amari Isaac. So if the foul's on Isaacs, then it should be our ball. So the foul was on Isaacs. That being said, I thought Manderson was the one who committed the foul. Yeah. Anyway, it's Longwood ball. After we get all that straightened out, Longwood turns it over, which only draws some appreciation from the home fans here at Brentwood. A few too many turnovers for this group tonight. When they've had a chance to take advantage, things are almost handed to them in a way at some points. And just not able to capitalize. Even though they're only down by six, yeah, two possession game, but they could be up right now. There's Kenny Lasso, bounce pass underneath. Nobody home. So second time in this fourth that Lasso's not been on the same page as some of his teammates. Again, first game back, he didn't even... He was able to practice yesterday. That was the first day he was cleared after returning from a broken elbow. That is a tough thing to do, despite the fact that, you know, you play summer ball together, you see each other throughout the year. Rancy taken away by Riley to the basket. Count it and one. And that's going to be the fifth and final foul on Jarnell Rancy. Dangerous foul as well as Rancy went underneath him. And Riley favoring you know, his lower body. He's kind of squatting down at the free throw line right now. Definitely a little shaken up. You know, you like seeing a player hustle throughout, but maybe not the best time to try and poke it away. It just isn't. You're playing with four. You're giving themselves already a pretty good look at the basket for Riley. Stay on the floor at that point, but nothing you can really do at the end of it. Listen, he picked up some ticky-tack fouls at some point. Some were clear, blatant fouls where you get caught out of position. And he's just been very quiet today because of that foul situation. Real good basketball player, Jarnell Rancy. He's got a bright future ahead. So Rancy ends the day with just two points. Again, limited by foul trouble all afternoon long. Free throw rims out, but an offensive board. Up top for Lasso. Lasso pushed off. Uh, Manderson over the bench calling for calling for a, a towel.
So after that's taken care of, a bit of housekeeping. Choppy start to the fourth quarter. We're 40 seconds in. There's Manderson calling a play. Stops, pulls up just inside the three. Too strong on that one as Messiah Collins has it. Good transition ball movement for Brentwood as Harris finishes down the other end. Ten point advantage for Brentwood is their largest lead tonight. And Longwood will take a timeout. Yeah, you're starting to feel like the wheels are coming off the wagon a little bit at this point. Still a lot of time left in this game though. Let's take a look at the Suffolk County League One standings. Of course, both these teams near the top as they are both unbeaten coming into tonight. You got Longwood and Brentwood. I know Coach Jimenez talked a lot about Comac and their abilities. Ward Melville was the tri-champion in League One with Longwood and Brentwood a year ago. But right now, it seems like a clear top three between Longwood, Brentwood, and Comac. And right now, Patrick Hayes has his work cut out for him. His team's on the road as this second half has gone on, as especially as Jordan Riley got more involved in this game. The crowd got more involved in this game. And for Coach Jimenez, it's just about keeping his team focused and finishing this thing off with a 10-point advantage. You know, we brought this up during our open map. You know, the big win, final regular season game. It's at Longwood, ends up earning the Tri-Champions, at least in League One. And what it did for the Longwood team was make them realize that Brentwood's human. You know, you can put them on the pedestal and respect them, but they are a human team. 10-point game is still a lot of time. You got to chip away here, but you have to play smart basketball down the stretch. And figure out a way to stop number 12, Jordan Riley as well. Something they haven't done is really attack some of the guys with foul trouble, like a Riley or Harris. There's Riley pull up. Shot partially blocked by Witte at the top of the key. Elijah Witte stumbles. Four on one for Brentwood now. Right to the basket is Collins. He is just a freshman. Messiah Collins has never worn a JV uniform. Came straight up. Middle school ball to high school. Missed shot by Longwood. It's a 15-2 run right now for Brentwood. Lazo picks it up off the floor. Three on one. Lazo underneath to Isaacs. Boy, and the wheels are starting to fall off for Longwood. Brentwood defense turning to offense. He is so athletic and great vision on the court. Not many people have that one athletic ability to make moves like that, two still have the open look to be able to hit the open man in transition. 14 point advantage for Brentwood. As you take a look at the championship history, fourth time Long Island champs and three times Suffolk double A champs, 14 and 15 the most recently. Last year, making it to the semifinals. They've been in that Final Four conversation pretty much this entire decade. Yeah, and they're expected to be. That's just the way the team is. That's how good they are and how they have been over the last number of years. They are a basketball powerhouse in Suffolk County and all of Long Island. Now, while you know they don't have the same kind of titles that Baldwin does or longer history like a Baldwin or even a Uniondale points for some of the other schools. I mean, this is still a group in Brentwood that over the last number of years, uh, I guess you can say they're championship deprived. It's been a couple of years, but they're still always in the conversation. The last year's group was very, very young, only gained experience and maturity over the last year plus. Driving to the basket, no, it will not count. An offensive foul on Jordan Anderson. Well, 5.39 to go in this one, and Brentwood is taking control, a 14-point advantage. It was a 47-46. Longwood lead late in the third quarter. 
Knocked out of bounds as Jordan Riley could not hold on to it. So a little scoring drought here. You, you need to just go back to what was working. And what was working was good ball movement and attacking the basket. Witte right to the basket. So that ends the run for Brentwood. And now can Longwood do something with that? The trail by 12. Jordan Riley dribbling between the legs, between the rings. Now Harris, Harris to the basket, no. Got his own rebound, up with it, that won't go. Tipped out, kept alive by Brentwood, third time won't go. Harris again, no again. And now Brentwood's gonna dribble it back out and reset. Lasso, right side for Isaacs, shot way off. By five, six times, Brentwood couldn't put it down. Manderson with some speed, foot on the line, two is good. Ten point game, 63-53, Brentwood leading. Midway through the fourth quarter. Matchup of unbeatens in Suffolk County League One. Underneath, wide open is Harris. He's flying. Witty poked back up and in. I think Knox got a piece of that one. Whistling a foul on Elijah Witty. So that will put Kenny Lazo at the line. And Lazo playing his first game this season after breaking his elbow in a preseason scrimmage. Did not start today. Lazo missing on the first free throw. Elijah Witte. Underneath, no good. Back up with it is Glenn who puts it in. And Johnny. it's back to a single-digit deficit for Longwood. Johnny O'Glenn hasn't played today. First time we're seeing number 13 get out there. Tranter from St. John's Prep. And comes right out and gets a quick two points and a much-needed two points. They got to keep attacking the basket. That, it just has to be the situation. You have to keep going after players, and it seems like they're almost shying away from doing so. Not only that, but... You look at how they started the game on that 12-3 run. They were crashing the offensive boards really well. Brentwood has done a much better job of closing out defensive possessions since that point. Yeah, no question, and you're also leaving points on the board. Too many times you've left opportunities out there, you're losing some of what is your game and what works so well. Let's go down to Amanda Puglisi. Longwood coaching staff using that opportunity and using that timeout to tell their players to keep the energy up. And of course, the coaching staff says everything for us is going to start on defense. Our defensive transitions, that's going to be the recipe for us. We need to get those defensive rebounds. Five guys need to box out. When that ball goes up in the air, everybody has to find a body. They said it seemed like we just watched Brentwood get six consecutive offensive rebounds. That cannot happen if we're going to make a comeback. Now, fortunately for Longwood, they didn't score off any of those consecutive offensive rebounds. Longwood showing some full court pressure. Romello right. Top for Lasso. On a curl, Riley to the basket, blocked from behind, underneath, no. Rebounded by Isaiah Witte. Witte to Elijah Witte. Elijah stops on the baseline, reverse shot, won't go, tipped around. Isaiah, pull up, no good. Long rebound, out it comes, Kenny Lazo on the outlet. Lazo across his body is fouled. 
I don't even know if he touched him that time, to be honest with you. I thought that was good defense. Take another look at the foul. Didn't look like much. Yeah, I'm not sure where he got him. So here's Kenny Lasso at the free throw line. He's in double figures, first game back. So Bryce Harris comes out. Looks like Brentwood is gonna bring Allen Houston back in. Again, both of them had some foul trouble early on. Harris going out with four. Houston coming back in, he's only got three fouls, so Coach Jimenez may be doing offense, defense substitutions between the two of them. <laughs> 10 point advantage for Brentwood, 67-57. Long three is short. Rebound to Longwood, but a foul on Brentwood. I think that was on, on Kenny Lazo. So Manderson with seven points today. He's had double figures in three of the last four games. throw up and good. So 2.35, still a good amount of time. Single digit game, we just need to stop and score one possession each. Into the hands of Jordan Riley. Two and a half to play. And Brentwood gonna take their time on these possessions. Use some clock to their advantage. But Longwood trying to put some pressure. Turnaround shot won't go. Battle for it down low, rebounded by Penciel. There's Witte. Now Manderson on the baseline. His shot deterred. Manderson getting it back underneath, puts it up and in. Oh, nice hustle play. Real good hustle play by Knox, who then just takes one to the face. And that's a big foul. I think that's the fourth foul on Jordan Riley. And that's the tenth team foul against Brentwood, so Double bonus for the Lions. Those two have been going at it all day long. It has been a real good battle. So Knox is set to inbounds. Elijah Witte. Witte kick back out from Anderson. Anderson straight away for Witte. Three pointer is good. Isaiah Witte. And it's a four point Brentwood lead. Straight away. Look how far back he was. Nothing but net. And now Longwood's starting to feel it a little bit on their side of the bench. Their supporters are out, jumping around. Again, this is still going to be a back and forth battle, and I think a big reason why is going to be you have to keep attacking those guys. You've got to attack those guys that have all those personal fouls because it could just take one little move. You knock them out of the game, but you've got to keep going and keep going because every time they've done it, it seemed to work. 
They were down by 14 moments ago. Eight to run over the last few minutes. And they've battled their way back to within striking distance at 67-63. You know, we talked about it. Patrick Hayes talked about the confidence gained in defeating Brentwood on their home floor in the last game of the regular season a year ago. He was hoping that confidence would show up tonight. And at least in the last few minutes, it has. Kenny Lazo to inbounds. Finds Harris. 90 seconds left in a four-point game. Matchup of unbeaten in Suffolk County League One. Kenny Lazo over the timeline. Lazo in front of the Brentwood bench. Lazo on Manderson. Lazo reverse offhand no. Rebound to Longwood. There's Isaiah Witte into the corner for Knox with a three. It's good. One point game. Andrew Knox, the guy who's been the agitator all game for Longwood. Here's Isaiah Witte is fouled. Fourth foul of the game for Kenny Lazo. And now with 58 seconds left, Isaiah Witte can go to the line to give Longwood the lead. What a turn of events. Ice cold veins from Andrew Knox from the corner. And then you put a little bit of pressure on and Romello Wright didn't see the guy cutting across who was Isaiah Witte. Witte taking it right at the basket, drawing himself a couple of free throws to take the lead. 24 points for Isaiah Witte tonight. Trying to add a couple more to that total. Ties it up at 67. Ten O run for Longwood right now. Again, about two minutes into the fourth, it was a 14-point Brentwood lead. Missing on the second. So we're all tied, 54 seconds left. Jordan Riley's got it, timeout. Anthony Jimenez in Brentwood. Now for Brentwood, you got a lot of options. You got Jordan Riley, Bryce Harris, Allen Houston hasn't been on the floor as much. Kenny Lasso, all those guys are scoring in double figures. Who's the guy that they can look to to answer right now? And there's still a lot of time on the clock. Even if you try and run this down with the shot clock, 27 on the timer, still 50 in the game. You still have a whole nother possession there, depending on how long you end up taking. So I wonder if you end up just trying to go for a quick two just in case and give yourself that opportunity early on. I mean, there really is no hot hand right now at the moment. Harris has been kind of quiet in this game. He still has 10 points, but you know, he's been a quiet guy so far down low. Houston was so good early on, especially in that third quarter, but he's kind of cool, cooled off a little bit because of his foul trouble. Riley, we saw what he did in the third quarter. So you have your options out there and then, of course, Lazo, who can, you know, pull up for a jumper or still move around you. They got right in there, who also is their three-point shooter, so you wonder if they look for him for a shot. 11 lead changes, five ties in this game, including right now. Under a minute to go, tied up at 67 in a matchup of unbeatens in Suffolk County League One. Here's Romello Wright. Left side, pull up three for Riley. It's good. Jordan Riley. 22 today. And Longwood will use their last timeout. Lights are shining bright in Brentwood and Jordan Riley has come to play. Uncontested three, splash. Three-point game, still 26 on the clock. But look at that, way too much room for Jordan Riley. 
Again, not a primary three-point shooter, but showing off his range. Boy, how does he get that wide open? That's one of those you kind of just keep in your arsenal because he hasn't taken many three-pointers, if any, today, at least to my recollection. So you're giving him that space and a little bit too much space, maybe, because you're giving that respect down low. Nothing but net. And what a turn of events here. Well, I want the crowd to its feet. So now here's what I'm really curious. Possession arrow in favor of Longwood. No matter what, Brentonwood would shoot two when they get fouled. Do you try and go for a quick two since there's so much time remaining? Or do you set it up for a three to tie up the game? We shall see. I mean, if you're looking at three-point shooters for Longwood, Isaiah Witte hit a bomb a couple of moments ago. Jordan Manderson as well. Who had five threes in a game earlier this year versus Cinema Riches. So Witte holding 22 seconds show on the scoreboard. Isaiah now to Elijah Witte. Elijah Witte to the basket, right side of the lane. Tough shot, won't go. Battle for a loose ball, and it's Brentwood ball on a Longwood foul. So Brentwood will be shooting two. That'll be Knox with his fourth. Double bonus here. So Kenny Lazo, again in his first game back this year, really a chance. For some insurance points for Brentwood. It's the first. Fans all on their feet here on the Brentwood side behind the Longwood bench. That's the case as well. Lasso in and out on the second. Out of bounds, kept alive by Longwood. Here's Mobley. Tough shot on a three is short. Rebounded by Brentwood with two seconds left. And then a foul. Messiah Collins will go to the line to put this away. Oh, the line showed a lot of heart down the stretch. Coming back within 10 to at least tie this thing up. But a foul ends up hurting strong defense and then putting it away at the stripe. Boy, it's gonna be real interesting when these two teams meet once again in February. Collins missed the first free throw. Actually, correction on it's the 29th of January at Longwood. Second one is good. Half court heave will not matter. As Brentwood holds on and avoids what would have been a real difficult loss if they gave up that 14 point lead. So they close out with the final five points of the game and a 72-67 win for Brentwood as they move to 8-0 on the season and hand Longwood their first loss of the year. Still plenty more to come from our Hospital for Special Surgery Game of the Week, the number one hospital for orthopedics with locations in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. The best is now nearby. Brentwood ends up winning by five after surrendering a 14 point lead in the fourth quarter, but they hold on 72 to 67. Jordan Riley had a monster second half, and he's down with Amanda Puglisi. All right, so guys, of course I'm in the middle of this mosh pit. Jordan, you had 24 points today. None probably more important than that three-pointer with 26 seconds left. Walk me through, what did you say to coach and what did you see in that one? I was told coach I got it. Let me get the last shot. You know, that's pretty much it. 
So your coach told us that you guys are such a good team at home. What is it and what makes you guys so dangerous here on your home field? Our team chemistry. Just getting along with each other, knowing what we're doing, getting all the plays, everything. So this was Kenny Lazo's first game back. What does he bring to this Indians team moving forward? He brings heart. He brings a lot of heart. He's a tough kid. All right, good luck the rest of the way, and I think your coach wants you. <laughs> Look at that. Coach gets a hug. Everybody gets a hug here at Brentwood. Matt, Dan, back to you guys. All right, thanks, Amanda. Again, Jordan Riley, a fantastic game, finished with 22 points. And not only is he our player of the game, but he also had our play of the game. Remember, Dan, he was back early in the third. He got called for a foul, went up with a dunk, and that got him going. Here's another one. Two in that third quarter that really got the fans involved in this one. Just so explosive, getting up there with a one-handed jam. That is what he brings to the table for you. We saw, of course, his three-pointer, which iced this game and gave him the lead. But it's what he can do all up and down the court that helps this team and propels them to an unbeaten 8-0 start. So again, Brentwood improves to 8-0 on the season. They move into sole possession of first place in Suffolk County League One with a 72-67 victory over Longwood on their home floor tonight. So that'll do it for everybody involved in our News 12 Varsity broadcast for Amanda Puglisi and Dan Savarino, as well as our producer, Brian Butler. I'm Matt Shortis saying so long. We'll catch you next time on the News 12 Varsity HSS Game of the Week. It's brought to you by HSS, the number one hospital for orthopedics with locations in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. The best is now nearby. Brentwood, a five-point win to stay unbeaten on the regular season.